Hello everyone, welcome to my series on A 2019 programming and today's topic is REST APIs in A 2019. Now A 2019 provides a, a fairly uh, simple uh, REST API collection. Uh, we have the post, port, get, patch and delete methods. Now the REST APIs that we are going to call are already part of this control room. So we put the REST APIs by preceding them with the control room URL. So I have opened the doc site over here the Automation Anywhere Docs portal and you can see that the initial uh, authentication API that we have to call we prepare the URL by putting our control room URL and then slash v1 slash authentication so that's the authentication API URL so let's see how it works we start by dragging the post method and we're going to use the system variable system a control room and then we are going to say v1 slash authentication now authentic mode, authentication mode says no authentication uh, the content type is json and in the parameters we need to put the parameters in this way we put a curly brace then in double quotes we put username that's the field name that should not change then double quotes and then you need to put your username so in this case let's say my username is my user id comma Next field name is password. This also should not change. Colon, once again double quotes and let's say you put your password over here, my password. Enter and then end the curly brace. So this is your input parameter that is uh, getting submitted to the URL using the post method. Now the return value that comes back from the JSON, uh, sorry, from the URL uh, API call that needs to be get stored in a dictionary. So I have already created a dictionary over here, DRCT response. That's a dictionary type variable. And in this dictionary, there is a key that is getting automatically created, which is DICT response and the key name is body. So when we call this API and we pass the username and password, a authentication token is generated and that token is getting stored in this dictionary with the key name body. When you message box body, you get a whole lot of information. But the first key, the first value is the token. And that token is used in all the further API calls. So if you're calling a authentication API, then you're calling a get devices, device list API, then you're calling a get bot ID API. And then finally you're deploying a bot. Then the authentication API will return the token and all the remaining APIs, you need to put the token in the header section. So if you see, there's a header section right here. In the authentication token API, this is blank. You don't need to put a header. But in all the remaining API calls, you need to put the header and the authentication token will come right here. I'll show you how. Okay, so when we run this code, the user ID password provided in the JSON parameters get deployed on the API and then this token is getting returned. So if you see this JSON, it's a huge JSON uh, result, but the first value is our token. That is the value that we need. Okay, so we close this and move on to the next API. Before we move on to the next API, let's discuss one more variation of the authentication API. Now authentication API, as we have seen here, we are passing the username and password. But one more variation of authentication API, we can go for API key instead of password. So API key is once again an encrypted value, something like a random uh, sequence of characters that we can pass instead of password. This is uh, mainly useful for single sign-on environment where we don't have to pass password explicitly. We can go with API key. Now, how to generate the API key? If you click on your profile uh, login name, you have an option here which says generate API key. Using this option, you can generate your own API key and then you can use it for API calls. Okay, so let's move on to the next API. Uh, now, whatever uh, token that we have uh, received from this API call, I have extracted that token using string actions and I have put that in the notepad. I've saved it over here. So I'm going to use this for further API actions. Now, if you search for bot scheduler APIs in for A2019, on the doc side, you will get the sequence of APIs. First authentication, then you list the files and folders by workspace. When you say workspace, you mean either private or public repositories. And then you get the available unattended bot runners that are present in the control room. And then it's optional to list the device pools if you have any. And then the final step is to schedule bots. So this is the sequence. So let's see uh, what are the uh, available unattended bot runners that we have in the control room. Let's try to get this uh, output. 
I am going to put all these links in the description, so don't worry about that. Okay, so this is the API for listing available unattended bot runners in the control room. So if you see, first we generate the authentication token and then we assign the authentication token to the request header. Then once again, we use our control room URL as the base with the extension of v1 devices run as users and list. And we pass the parameters of username direction is ascending or descending the sort direction and there are some optional parameters over here. So with this request body, it returns the list of unattended users which are present in the control room. Let's see how that works. So back to our editor, we are going to again search for the REST web service package and go for a post method. In the URI, we are going to put this URL copy and paste we're going to replace this section with our system variable a control room remove the slash okay now we're going to add a header to this so we click on add header now the name of the token is x authorization and Let's go with insecure string, copy the value from notepad and paste it over here. Add. So that's our header. Now, in the JSON parameters, we are going to put the parameters in the sequence. So we are going to sort with field name and keep the remaining things blank. I'll just copy paste this. So it will just return the list of unattended runners and it will sort the data using the field username and it will sort in ascending order and that's it we don't need any more filters nothing else so that's our parameter list and when the output comes back once again we are going to store it in DICT response and we are going to see the body of the response so let's run this and see how it works okay so now you can see the list of all unattended devices, unattended runner devices have been uh, sent back to me and uh, we have the username field, we have the device field, we have the device ID field and the user ID field. So all these details have come to me. And from here I can decide to choose a certain ID or a device to be used for my bot scheduling. So this is how we can use uh, REST APIs for authentication and then for further actions, right? We can go for uh, retrieving file IDs from control room, we can use the file ID and we can use the device ID for scheduling bots in control room. Right? We can check for the status of a uh, ongoing automation in the control room using APIs. So the detailed documents are provided in the doc site. I'm going to put the link in my description. So in today's video, we saw how to authenticate a user and get the API token, how to put that API token in a header and in the next in the next API and get the uh, list of unattended bot runners. So similarly, we can get the list of files and folders and we can schedule a bot to run APIs. Just follow the docs portal. I have given the link in the uh, comments in the descriptions um, if you face any issues just uh, uh, drop a message in the comment section i'll be happy to post a video for you thank you